Good to Grey Gang, me and Ethan's out here. We are doing some deer prep, okay? The last deer hunting video, I told you guys that my eight pointer that I've been tracking down all season got its leg blew off and uh, yeah, it, it, got, it got found dead. So I'm pretty sure that was Wallace. Walrus and never came around again, so he's gone too. So basically I was just here and uh, there's no more bucks. Until, let me check this out. Let me put my phone and show you what I've been finding on my trail camera recently. I literally thought all of the bucks were gone. Then I got this. Check this out. This is on my one of my trail cameras right here at that trap and it's a decent buck i mean it's pretty good for around here well it's not it's not good it's not as good as wallace it's not as good as walrus i'm kind of thinking that it was dave but i'm not sure dave was one of the ones earlier in our first deer hunting video we looked at i don't know dave never came around much and i think this might be dave because he looks like a small seven maybe a small eight he's not a bad deer i don't know guys maybe it is a bad deer he looks pretty young he's he's not a big deer basically what i'm here to tell you guys is that if i I see him i'm probably gonna shoot him just saying and i'm probably gonna try to kill him. is he massive no is he a shooter he is around here because deer usually don't get very big people usually shoot their legs off but we checked this truck hammer earlier and we have another video of that deer on here so he's actually coming pretty consistently we'll check this out real quick and then we got another truck camera down there we're gonna check it see if we can get another picture of him and then we've actually got a blind that we might be setting up and then obviously we got to go deer hunting in this video whenever i get down there to that camera i'll tell you what my problem is and how we're going to try to fix it. But as for now, he came right in the same spot again. We didn't get to see him too good that time, but he just walked through the frame. That shows that he was here. He was here at night, but obviously from those pictures I've showed you in that one video, he actually comes during the day. Now we have a corn pile right down here that we put out corn every now and again in. So I'm thinking if he's going to come consistently at all, he's probably going to consistently come to this spot. Now this trail camera, we're going to have to take the memory card back to the computer to check it, but that's okay. The problem that I have is that the corn pile is here. The tree stand is over there. Now, is that a bad tree stand? No, is it a bad tree stand location? Not really. But the problem comes in is where you actually enter the tree stand from. In order to hunt the tree stand, the main way that we always come is out here through the field, right through here, and into the tree stand. If you know much about deer, you know that scent is really important. So just in order to get in that tree, you're putting your scent from all the way from over there where the deer come from, all the way through here. So basically everything from here, that way is now off limits because your scent is all through here. You'd probably have to come in from down there. And if you, yeah, if you wanted to hunt it most efficiently, you'd literally have to go down in the holler and walk up the mountain. Same thing with walking through the field. If something's coming through the field, you can't really expect it to come on in if it smells you. He's gonna be like, I'm gonna head out. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be a good idea. We're gonna have to figure out a better way to get in here or a different place to hunt. And that's what I brought the blind for. I think we may have to set up the blind. Let me pull out the memory card. We'll go in the house, we'll check it. Also keep in mind that I can only use a bow or a crossbow. Wherever we set up, we're gonna have to be within range. There's a deer right there. You know muzzleloading will be in in like two weeks? That's true, there's a deer right there. Do you see it? Yeah. It's just chilling in the field. It's a doe, but that's, it's okay, I guess. But yeah, I was thinking maybe if I set it right there, I won't have to bring my scent all the way across the corn pile to hunt the corn pile. But also, if I'm using a bow, that's about a 50 yard shot. And that's not gonna be easy. I didn't even easy with a crossbow. So I really don't know. I think we're gonna need more information on this buck. Where you been at all deer season, youngin? That's one of the does, so. She don't care. That's the thing, she don't even care. She knows we ain't gonna hurt her. Let's go check this truck camera, we'll see what's popping. It's okay, dear. We have no business for you, only your boyfriend. Alrighty guys, moment of truth, here we go. Let's fill up through these, see what we got. There's me pouring out corn, that's awesome. What the world? Dude, that's bigger. That's not him. What do we name this deer? That's not, that first one's not Dave. Is that bigger than Dave? That's bigger than Dave. He's like a six, he's like a big six, that's weird. Hopefully we'll get some more pictures. Yeah, he's a big six. That ain't even Dave. What's his name? Charlie. Charles. His name's Charles. Would I shoot him? I probably would, honestly. If I had him with a bow. If I had him with a bow. But yeah, I'd definitely shoot Charles. I got some clear, pretty clear pictures of Charles. He's coming at 12 at night. Squirrel, 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 squirrel. Still squirrel, 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 squirrel. Nope. There's a spike. But yeah, we got, we got Charles. Bunch of squirrels in this spike. And that's always even had so far. Is that us today? Well, that's interesting. All we got is that Spike and Charles. We didn't even get Dave this time. Hmm. You know, I still think we should put that blind where we was talking about because they're going to come through that field to go there anyhow. I think they will. Especially since we're hunting basically evenings, the only time I'm going to be hunting. They always come through that field, so I think we'll go set that up anyhow. I think that's going to be our best bet. Let's go do it. 
Alrighty guys, we're gonna set up the blind. Where exactly do we wanna do it? We know that we wanna set it up so that we can hunt deer coming from the field and down that road right there. So anywhere probably over here on this bank will be okay. Over here, it's pretty thick. So I'm thinking we can maybe rip some of those limbs down and stick it in there and it'll be a good filler and maybe it'll look more natural. The deer will get pretty close to me right there. But like I was saying, if we play the wind right to where the wind is blowing that way, I'll be downwind from them and they won't smell my scent. Have at it. What are you using there? Show us what you're using. KG hatchet. Absolutely right. One. Kendall Gray, one.com slash off first link description. Pick you up a hatchet. I'm just saying, guys, the hatchet's a stinking savage. <laughs> I'd say we'll take out the those dead ones and like stick it right there. We'll catch y'all in a minute. Actually, we're gonna do a time lapse, so just hang in there, enjoy this festive Christmas music. Did I say festive Christmas music? I meant hipster Christmas music. <laughs> We tried. We tried. It doesn't look bad. I know that. I mean, it's it's kind of obvious. Kind of not. I, we could probably get a shrub and stick in the front of it, which we might actually do. So, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to camouflage it a little bit more. And then after that, I'm going to let Ethan take the camera and act like a deer. And I'm going to shoot it from the block. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get in the blind. And I'm going to let Ethan walk by and act like he's a deer. We'll see how this thing works. Got this nice little preschool chair. I'll let this one down halfway. Like this, I can be a little bit higher so I can have me a bow. If I wear black, I should be all right. If you had all black on, I couldn't see you really. Where'd he go? That's exactly right. I think the bush definitely helps it. Yeah. Eventually those leaves will die, but then they'll just turn brown and they'll still look like the blind. It'd be unsuspecting right here. I give the deer like two days and they'll get be used to it, 100%. They don't care. Whenever you're standing over there, you can barely even see it. Even from right here, it's kind of hard to see whenever you're moving. Oh yeah, for sure, looking down the field, you can't even see it's there. I already lost it. I ain't even got a clue where it is. I, I can't even see it anymore. Well, I lost my blind just like that. Crazy. Anyways, guys, here in a few days, we're going to come out here and hunt it a little bit. Next time you see me, we'll probably be coming out here to try bow hunt. And we're back, guys. What we're doing today, we're going to be shooting the bow a little bit. Here's the bow, just in case you don't believe me or something. I don't know. But first, Bushnell actually sent me a rangefinder, and they didn't really tell me anything about it. I mean, they told me they was going to send me this in, like, one of my last videos, but they were, like, six months late on it. But this, they never actually told me that it's getting, so that's kind of cool. I don't know. Let's figure it out, though. They are binoculars. Fancy box. Real nice. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. I have opened this box terribly wrong, but... Ooh, okay. Ooh, that's a nice packaging. Very nice, very nice. If you're wondering, these are the Engage X. Can y'all see me? No, okay, never mind. I can't see y'all either. Something's up. There we go. Let me see how they work out here. Oh, yeah, those are pretty good. Those are pretty OP, not gonna lie. Overpowered. The only thing that can make them better is if you had a built in rangefinder, but that's asking for quite a lot, so I appreciate it. Plus, they already sent me a rangefinder, and it's this one right here. We do have a target. It is right over there, is the yellow thing. Let's zoom on in. We'll go ahead and get started shooting a little bit. Now, the reason we're shooting today is we gotta make sure that we're dialed in guys i mean we shoot the bow pretty often you can never shoot it too much especially if you plan on killing something with it yeah i'll be practiced up that one right there 27 yards that should be no problem at all i'm trying a new release today it's not completely new y'all have seen it before but it's this one right here here's the bow let's turn my sight to 27 all right we'll try i'm not an expert with this kind of release but i hope nothing goes wrong if it blows up it's not my fault <clears throat> i'm in for the middle one Oh, that ain't looking good at all, boys. That didn't, that, uh, that didn't, that didn't, no, 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 that didn't look good. I don't know, we'll shoot this a couple more times. If I can't get any better, I don't know what to do, guys. We may just have to go back to the old top. Yeah, this ain't fun. Something ain't right here. It's hit my arm twice, and I'm not hitting where I'm aiming at all. Keep hitting my arm. This ain't cool. Change is needed. I don't, I don't think I like this release. We're going to have to change. I hit my arm. That's not necessarily the bow's fault. But if I wanted to change to that release, I would have to change my peep 
hot. Change the sights. And honestly, I mean, I, I don't really like it that much and I'm not used to it. So we're just gonna stick with the other one. Ow! Come on, dude. And yeah, that's the plan, I guess. Sorry if this is kind of boring. I don't know. I'm just kind of a boring person, I guess. Sorry. I don't know. So bye. Okay, guys. We switched back to the Captain America release. This one, I really like this one for some reason. It's one of the more inexpensive ones, but I actually like it a lot. So it doesn't matter how much it costs. If it works for me and if I like it, that's all that matters. So let's sling a few. If we can be on target, then that's all we really need. We're ready to go deer hunt. Here we go. I'll put four L's in the center and we'll see what we can do. Let's go check them out. I feel like I did pretty good because on that third one, I actually heard it hit the other arrow. Okay, for consistency, I don't think I could have got too much better. Obviously, I could have got a little bit better, but that's perfect with me. It is a little bit low and to the left. The low could have been, you know, maybe I didn't tune in my sight perfectly. But yeah, honestly, that right there is pretty good. I'd say now we just go on back and then we just... We get ready and we go bow hunting. To hunt down a big buck, the one that we was looking at in the beginning of the video, it's not gonna be super easy. It's probably not gonna be a one-time hunt. What it takes to kill a big buck is time in the woods. And yeah, basically it. You just gotta put, it, put in the time. So yeah, let's go do that. Thank you, Bushnell, for sending me the binoculars. <laughs> What is up guys? We're out here. Um, my blind that I was gonna hunt in, the wind actually blew it away So we're having to go to a new location. The cool thing about this new location is that there's actually deer here It's crazy. But listen guys, here's the thing. At the beginning of this video I wanted to kill a decent sized buck. Now that we're coming towards the end of the video and the end of season My motives have changed a little bit. Okay, instead of going for a decent rack I literally just want something to eat. Like my deer supply is dwindling. I got like six packs of deer meat left and I just ain't gonna do very long. So yeah guys, if, you, if I kill a spike in this video, don't get mad at me, okay? I'm getting kind of hungry. Okay guys, I'm heading in now and just on the trail that I'm walking in, I'm seeing deer prints and pretty big ones too. You can see that one right there. We're just heading right up this hill straight towards the tree stand. It is pretty dark, but I'd like to get got here a little bit earlier. If I get up here fast enough, I'll be able to watch the sunrise. I usually I usually sleep until 10 o'clock and don't get to see anything. So yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, guys, here's our view this morning. We got the boat locked and ready. Kinda, can't really lock it or cock it, but you get the point. If anything comes up on me right now, I can see it. But here's the problem. So far, I've been in the tree about, for probably about three minutes and I've dropped everything I own out of the tree stand. I dropped the camera, I dropped my flashlight. I even dropped my boat, so it's just fingers crossed that it still shoots on. Yeah, not a really quiet start to the morning, but we just gonna deal with it, you know what I Maybe we'll still be able to use it. If not, then we're gonna go home. I'm gonna shoot my bow some more. Then we're definitely 
coming back this evening, guys. Hopefully my arrow will still be good and we can finish out this morning. There's still a good chance at least some other deer comes. Every other deer I've ever shot at with a bow, I've killed it. I've not shot at a deer with a bow in three years. So, yeah, kind of makes sense. This is a doe, so it's not super crazy. It's just a doe taken pretty similar to the same path as that buck. We're going to go ahead and get down pretty soon. I may spook a deer, but i got to go get that arrow before more deer come. All right, guys, I'm not trying, I'm not going to try to waste any time. I need to get my arrow as soon as I can to get back to the stand. I've made a lot of rookie mistakes this time. One, I only brought one arrow. Usually, I don't even see a deer, so I didn't even think about bringing two. Second, I rushed a shot. I got way too excited, and I thought he was going to run away, so I took, so I rushed a shot. Three, this is a rookie YouTuber mistake. I've literally been making YouTube videos for five years, and, and this is the morning. I forget to change the GoPro battery, and it went out. I had an awesome view. He went a couple yards behind the place where I thought was 33 yards, so I held a little bit high. I don't really know what happened, guys, but I didn't hit him at all. I ended up nailing this tree, and unfortunately, I think we're going home early, guys. This thing broke. Man, that's so sad. I don't want to talk about it. All right, all you Fig Newtons, I've came up with another excuse. I've been replaying that scenario in the back of my head, the back of my cranium, right back here. I'm starting to think there is a slight possibility that that tree was in front of the deer. Because whenever I looked at the tree, I mean, the arrow was right chest level where a deer would be. And I'm like, you know what? I don't think I flinched that bad. Like, yeah, of course, I definitely rushed the shot, but I don't think I rushed it that bad. I'm just saying, whenever I was looking at the deer, he was like this. There was a couple of trees right here, but I thought that was okay because I was aiming back here behind the shoulder. I think my arrow maybe drifted a few inches to the right and hit the tree. Now, of course, that's not an excuse. Basically, I executed today probably one of the worst ways I possibly could execute it. But I learned a lot, okay? And maybe you guys can learn this too. Bring more than one arrow and you ain't kung fu panda, okay? Take your time. But anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice right here, okay? I'm gonna get caught off guard somehow and try to hit the target. Right now, we are 30 yards. Also, I have my rangefinder wrapped around my neck. I felt like a stink professional, just saying, guys. So if you have a rangefinder, get a string tied around your neck and it makes you feel like eight times cooler. My head cam GoPro died five seconds before I took the shot. It was ridiculous. Also, I gotta figure out how to shoot with gloves. I don't think gloves were the problem at all. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead, retrace my steps. We're just gonna take a couple shots and see what in the world went wrong. You know, even, even though I didn't kill that deer this morning, I had so much fun. That was so awesome. I mean, obviously it could have been better, but I looked at him. I saw him. I locked eyes with him, except he didn't see me. So technically we didn't lock eyes. He walked behind the tree and hit a little bit high. Boom, hit a stick. Awesome. All right, hit the target. Slow and steady, KG, slow and steady. See if you can get a decent knock. All right, this is, this is a little bit of a problem here. My anchor point is completely messed up, but we'll see if I can still hit. I still have a decent anchor point. What the heck, dude? Like, seriously, what the heck? That's dead center. Dead center. We'll try it more time. That one would have killed him, too. Ew, Ricky Bobby. That one was decent, too. All three of them would have killed him. Woo, three, two, one. All right, all you Fig Newtons, I've came up with another excuse. I've been replaying that scenario in the back of my head, the back of my cranium, right back here. Yeah. Mmm. I'm starting to think there is a slight possibility that that tree was in front of the deer. Okay? Because whenever I looked at the tree, I mean, the arrow was right chest level where a deer would be. And I'm like, you know what? I don't think I flinched that bad. Like, yeah, of course, I definitely rushed the shot, but I don't think I rushed it that bad. Hmm. Now, I'm not saying I didn't rush the shot, but I'm just saying, I think that whenever I saw the deer, he was like this. The tree... The, there, was a, there was a couple trees right here, but that did... I'm just saying, whenever I was looking at the deer, he was like this. There was a couple of trees right here, but I thought that was okay because I was aiming back here behind the shoulder. Eh, I think my arrow maybe drifted a few inches to the right and hit the tree. Mm. Now, of course, that's not an excuse because I hadn't, I was basically, I basically, every, basically, I executed today probably one of the worst ways I possibly could execute it. But I learned a lot, okay? And maybe you guys can learn this too. Bring more than one arrow and you ain't cut... And you ain't Kung Fu Panda, okay? Take your time. You ain't, that, you ain't that good. You ain't as good as you think you are. But me, 
I'm better than I think I'm. Just kidding, y'all. I, I, I don't think that needs explained. But anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to practice right here, okay? I'm going to get caught off guard somehow and try to hit the target. Right now, we are... Thirty yards. This morning he's thirty-three, but bulls is close enough. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Also, I had the also I had my rangefinder wrapped around my neck. I felt like a stink professional. Just saying, guys. So if you have a rangefinder, get a string tied around your neck, and it makes you feel like eight times cooler. But yeah, I just had that bad boy wrapped around like that. You could hear in the head cam I clicked it, but like, bro, couldn't see anything. My dang head cam, my head, my head cam GoPro died. Five seconds before I took the shot. It was ridiculous. <clears throat> but yeah. I, but yeah, I gotta figure out how to shoot my bow with this thing on or figure out how to take this off really quietly without moving. So I think I'm just gonna have to figure something out. Also, I gotta figure out how to shoot with gloves. I don't think gloves were the problem at all. Cause uh, you know, I felt the trigger beforehand and everything was alright. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead, retrace my steps. We're just gonna take a couple shots and see what in the world went wrong. Let's see, the same tightness. Um, we're going to reset it to 30 yards. <laughs> uh, that's just, uh, you know, even, even though I didn't kill that deer this morning, I had so much fun. That was so awesome. I mean, obviously it could have been better. But, I mean, obviously it could have been better, but that's just a really fun experience because... I looked at him, I saw him, I locked eyes with him, except he didn't see me, so technically we didn't lock eyes. But I was like, okay, he's go he's coming this way. It looks like he's going looks like he's gonna go on that trail. So I went ahead, ranged the tree in front of him. It was 33 yards. He walked behind the tree, it had a little bit high, boom, hit a stick. Awesome. Mm. But yeah, um Alright, hit the target. Slow and steady, KG, slow and steady. See if you can get a decent knock. Alright, this is this is a little bit of a problem here. My anchor point is completely messed up, but we'll see if I can still hit. I still have a decent anchor point. What the heck, dude? Like, seriously, what the heck? That's dead center. Dead center. We'll try it one more time. <clears throat> All right, this time, we'll go under a little bit more pressure. <sighs> I tell you what, guys, honestly, I think the best thing we can do... <laughs> let's go back hunting. All right, guys, we're making my way down. When I spotted this, it is what it is because it is what it is. My guys, I'm in this stand. My stand has this weird tarp around it and it's really loud, but that's actually okay. It's always been here, so like the deer are used to it. But before it gets prime time, we're gonna go ahead and do the verse of the week. This week's verse of the week is coming out of Proverbs 29.5. It is dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you, but if you trust in the Lord, you are safe. What that verse is talking about is the opinions of others and how you really shouldn't dwell on them at all. That's one thing I really like about hunting. I can come out here and not see a single deer and wear my $20 German jacket and nobody's going to make fun of me for it until I post the videos. And then the second part of the verse says, but if you trust in the Lord, you're safe. So what that verse is telling us to do is just don't worry about other people's opinions because other people are not God and it doesn't matter. Be quiet. The stand, this tarp is really loud. But like I said a minute ago, the deer are conditioned to it. They're used to it. But yeah, I'm gonna be quiet. I spooked two does. I don't know if I told you that. I'm walking in here. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I just gotta stay here and start looking around. Okay, guys, a couple hours, maybe a few hours of dead by. I've not seen anything. But that's just part of deer hunting, okay? Alrighty, guys, as much as I hate to say it, we just didn't see any deer today at all. But, I mean, we did when we came in, we spooked two does, but that ain't what we was looking for. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. I don't know if you liked the video. If you did, let me know. And if you want to buy any merch, like this big headpiece thing, you know, graywool.com slash shop, first link in the description, pick up some merch. It really does help support the channel. At this rate, we're going to need all the money we can get. I'm losing broadheads pretty fast. That's the most uncoordinated thing I've ever did in my life. Bye. <laughs>